Gaming 7th Generation played a host to a great deal of entertaining titles and noteworthy advances, but not everything was a winner. Look, the more you tell me, the more chance I can keep us alive. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst 7th Generation games. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're examining the games that most failed to meet even the barest expectations of quality in the 7th console generation. Ranging from series revivals to attempts at starting a new IP, these games dropped the ball in more ways than one. So you want me to investigate, but have no authority, influence, or access? Exactly. Number 10, Bomberman Act Zero. How exactly does someone mess up gaming's most charming and enduring series? In the case of 2006's Bomberman Act Zero, one way is to forego depth or quality of play in favor of embracing a needlessly grim style. Bomberman's simple, cartoon aesthetic was replaced by garish, over-designed characters traversing uninspired mazes. Every stage has the same textures and overall look, the competitive gameplay never evolves or shifts substantially, and the game is plagued by lengthy load times and poor collision detection. Disinterest in and disrespect for the original titles drips from every inch of this game, and it's all the worse for it. Ready? Start. Number 9, Quantum Theory. You gotta run faster than that if you wanna make it out alive. Borrowing from the likes of Gears of War, this third person shooter fails to deliver anywhere near the same level of charm or polish. Quantum Theory follows Sid and Felina in their quest to save humanity by climbing and destroying a living tower. However, its close quarter shooting is far less creative than the concept present, relying on dull repetition of level layout and subpar presentation for its entirety. Characters lack any real personality or depth, and what story is present proves to be utterly formulaic from start to finish. All in all, calling this one a dud would be kind of an understatement. More hostiles in that central building! Stay tight. More we could be hiding anywhere. Number 8, X-Men Destiny. Mutants are nature's greatest mistake. When this licensed game by developer Silicon Knights starts in its earnest, it presents an interesting premise to players, controlling a new mutant with the choice to fight for the X-Men or Magneto's Brotherhood. I won't join you. I won't be a part of your mutant nation. Any goodwill earned, though, is quickly dashed by X-Men Destiny failing to deliver on meaningful narrative choices or engaging gameplay. The game's combat mechanics are simplistic, the fights are repetitive, the platforming segments rely on awkward controls and bizarre level design, and the story is astonishingly brief in length and content. Coupled with the divisiveness of Silicon Knights' earlier game, Too Human, this would only serve to bring about the studio's downfall all the faster. You leave me no choice. I will have you arrested for terrorism. <laughs> I cordially invite you to try. Number 7, Amy. Amy, this nice lady here really wants to find you. This horror game has the titular girl and her guardian Lana trying to survive in a city overrun by zombie-like creatures. In service of that narrative, the game forces onto the player luck-based stealth sections, hit-and-miss melee combat, a forced attachment to Amy to avoid death, and generally awkward third-person controls. <laughs> its setting is one plagued by low-quality textures, a murky aesthetic, and excruciating amounts of slowdown. Capping it all off, Amy sports a checkpoint system that stands as one of gaming's most unforgiving. Just avoid this one, folks. We're alive, if that counts. Is Amy okay? Amy is... She's changing. Number six, Rogue Warrior. Come on! Shiva! This conceptually strange shooter didn't even find a way to be compelling in its weirdness. Based very loosely on the exploits of ex Navy SEAL Richard Marcinko, Rogue Warrior deals with a fictional mission to North Korea to investigate nuclear arms development. I trained these men up through the SEAL program. They've saved my ugly ass more than once. The madness that ensues is riddled with issues. The game is kind of a chore to play, features combat moves that can be abused to great benefit, and is astounding in its brevity, reaching only about two hours long. Then there's the brilliant decision to have the game's version of Marcinko, played by Mickey Rourke, to be a profanity-spewing, casually reckless jerk who quickly wears out his welcome. Goddamn cock breath coming, motherfuckers! Here, hold this for me, you little bitch. Number 5, Leisure Suit Larry, box office bust. Oh yeah, my life's incredible. My carbon imprint is non-existent. 
maybe it's time to let this series go. Box Office Bust picks up where its predecessor, Magna Cum Loud, left off, following Larry Lovitch as he helps out his uncle's film studio. If this doesn't cry out to be photographed, I don't know what crying. <laughs> Hypothetically a fun idea, the game instead opts to indulge in witless jokes about physical appearance and a hodgepodge of gameplay styles. Racing segments, platforming, open world exploration, shooting, fighting. Many genres are represented here, but none with any care. Hey, how goes the ball busting, Denise? Say hi to my good nephew here, Larry Lavage. Add on unresponsive controls and severe technical issues. And what players have is a game that tries to be special, yet doesn't even manage to be competent. You don't get an office, asswipe. You're not going to be doing much sitting around here. Number four, Aliens, Colonial Marines. Sir, what happened in there? We shit the bed. As if the Alien franchise didn't have a hard time enough retaining respect, this past generation dealt fans a grave blow. With all due respect, sir, due my respect squad means you shut your goddamn mouth and follow your orders. Colonial Marines picks up after the events of the 1986 film and tries to deliver a fanservice-laden horror experience. Unfortunately, due in large part to developer Gearbox's misconduct and poor allocation of funding, the game proper is a visually repugnant and mechanically dated mess. Players battle idiotic AI foes, while contending with plentiful bugs and glitches, ugly and poorly lit environments, and a haphazard implementation of franchise nods. Plus, we'll never forget its baffling retcons. Ugh, what a waste. O'Neill, there's all these husks in the sewer. What kind of bugs are these? Number three, Sonic the Hedgehog, AKA Sonic 06. I may not know what Eggman's up to, but it can't be a good thing. Yeah, we all knew this one was coming. Released in the honor of the 15th anniversary of Sonic's creation, Sonic the Hedgehog, also known as Sonic 06, actively shows disregard and wanton disrespect for its mascot's legacy. This 3D platformer delivers three overlong and poorly designed campaigns, each bogged down by unresponsive control schemes and game-breaking glitches. Whoa! Furthermore, the game's story is a mess of melodramatic segments and its characters, both new and old, are either annoying, one-dimensional, or annoying and one-dimensional. You must eliminate the individual who has awakened Iblis, the Iblis trigger. On top of everything else, Sonic 06 also teases the audience with hints of a romance between Sonic and the human princess Elise, which is the epitome of weird. Number two, Steel Battalion, Heavy Armor. If there was a game of the seventh generation that illustrated just how badly the Kinect peripheral failed, this is it. Heavy Armor took the complex mech simulation gameplay of the original Steel Battalion and tied it to using both the 360 controller and the motion control interface of the Kinect. Far from proving a seamless transition, this design choice instead rendered the game virtually unplayable. Quick lever pulls and button pushes are necessary to progress, yet the often inaccurate nature of the Kinect directly impedes this. Making matters even worse, missions had unforgivably short length while demanding precise action, and the game's lineup of characters were criticized for playing into unfortunate stereotypes. Hey, can I get you a pillow or something, partner? You gonna stay away from this mission or what? Before we get to our top pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions. Forget it. Nothing can save her now. I have no idea what you're talking about. You're a... Vampire. A vampire like Tom and me. <laughs> yeah, right. Number one, Ride to Hell, Retribution. No one quite knows how this game got cleared for a physical release, but we all wish it really hadn't. Very funny. Stuck in development limbo for years, the so-called game that was Ride to Hell proved unbelievably unpleasant on so many levels. Each sequence cycled through poor approximations of cover-based shooting, racing, and third-person beat-em-up mechanics. Its open-world design was scrapped in favor of an uninspired linear mission structure. It treated women as objects who were down to give it all up after being saved from attackers, even though they don't exactly take their clothes off, so it really doesn't pay off in any respect. It's gross, infantile, vapid, and a complete disservice to the medium of games. My shit ain't cheap, but seeing as how I knew your old man, I'll help you out. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.